I mean, honestly, one hoped that one had left this sort of thing behind in the city. Eh? Yeah, that's why we moved out here. Yeah. I mean, what, what, what use is a trolley jack to anybody? I'd say it'd be pretty useful in the country, sir. Oh. Yeah. When was it knocked off? Oh, uh, three or four days ago. And you didn't think of reporting it at all? <laughs> much good that would do. I mean, it was only a jack. Mm. I mean, you chaps wouldn't be in too much of a hurry to track it down now, would you? <laughs> Could have bought another one straight away, I suppose. No, that's OK. I'll get the jack, too. Thank you very much, officer. Oh, you're right. Listen, I'd be getting a new spare tyre, though. You might be able to get away with not having a jack, but you're not going to go too far on three wheels now, are you? No, very true. <laughs> How long have you been out here? Oh, not very long, not very long. Love it already, though. The open spaces and the clean air. Yes, yes, I see what you mean. Oh, well, then. Wayne? Oh, sorry, I'd better get going. Oh, right. You get that tyre fixed. Right you are, I will, yes. We've got another burglary. Another one? Yeah, someone wants to keep us busy. <laughs> Mr. Talbot. That's right. Keith. What was taken? Oh, TV, stereo, some jewellery. Julie's great-grandfather's watch. Julie's your wife, she said. That's right. What was the watch worth? Oh, it's been in the family for years. The insurance company valued it at over a thousand. Call PJM? Yes, thanks, Wayne. Mate, could you just check with the neighbours too after you've done that, see if they saw anything? They were towing as hell and you know it. Maybe it was just shock. Their house had just been broken into. They could have been upset. <laughs> shock, I can understand. Upset, I can understand. But Toey's something else. You two care to let us in your little debate? The same with the other Bergs, TV, cash, video. But? Uh, this one's got a bit of a difference. No sign of forced entry. Well, it wouldn't be the first time a house was left unlocked around here. Yeah, but the wife was adamant they'd locked up, but the husband wasn't so sure when we asked him. So what does that make it? Three burglaries? Uh, four in this rush. Car's been broken into outside the Imperial. Radio's gone. A few tools. All right, I'll go. Maggie, you want to come? Uh, yep. Car parts, eh? Yeah, it might be worth getting Todd Ellery in for a chat. Whatever it is, I didn't do it. Guilty conscience, Todd. Nothing to be guilty about. Can I have a cup of coffee or something? No, you can't. <laughs> Look, if it's about that bike I sold you, she's as clean as a whistle. I told you she needed a bit of work. It's not about the, the bike, mate. Look, you're going to help us out with some inquiries, OK? Now, there's a lot of spare parts floating about at the moment. Is that right? Yeah. Look, Todd, do you want to help me out, or would you like me to come down to that tin shed you call a workshop and have a good look at the spares you're using? Look, you didn't hear it from me, all right? What's coming in? Just about anything. Tyres, radios, you name it, you can have it. Someone asking for the stuff? There's always someone asking for the stuff, mate. Perhaps you'd like to tell me who that someone might be. <laughs> yeah, sure. Look, mate, help me out here, OK? Now, if you hear of anything, let me know. I'll come around. I'm looking forward to it. I'm keeping my nose clean. Sure. Bye now. Anything? No, just another bloody reporter. Right? What about you? Todd's keeping his nose clean. Hey, Max, check this out. Oh, I'm sorry, Adam. I don't have time for light reading. Boss is getting the National Medal. Yeah, no, I can read, Adam. Yeah, why didn't you tell anyone? We've got a match on the Prince and the Talbot house. Now, he didn't tell us he had a son or that he had a criminal record. It was hardly criminal. Shoplifting. He didn't even go to court for it. Did he seem different? Changed at all? No. That's what made it all so awful. On the outside, he was still Michael. There was one thing. He had a tattoo on his arm. A tree, of all things. Well, thanks very much for coming. Can you come with this me? presentation thing on in St David's tomorrow? Yeah. You'll look after things here? Yeah, sure. Good, huh? About time, they got around to giving it to you. Yeah. So what did they give you this National Medal for, boss? Well, you have to be in the job for 15 years, Cooper, and you have to behave yourself. Yeah, but haven't you been in 25 years? Well, it's taken them 10 years to realise I was due for it. Some great articles in here. Mm -hmm. Look, Chris, forensics. Mm. I'll have nightmares. Sleep? Mm. Sleep wasn't what I had in mind. Oh, really? Hmm. What was that? I don't know. All the guests are in. There's someone down there, that's for sure. Now, <coughs> Thomas, please. Yes, Chris. <coughs> right on our way. Don't look at the palm. <laughs> Police, don't move! 
terrific. Oh, no, you're not going in there, Chris. Can you let me in? I Good. just want to ask why. You're going to come over here. Let me go. Come on, you're going to come over here. Come over here, sit down there. Park yourself there. You can tell me what happened. Well, I locked up down here and then I went upstairs to bed. Yeah, Adam was in bed too. Oh, nice. Well, yes. And I couldn't sleep because... Oh, no. no. <sighs> well, no, I couldn't sleep. And then Adam heard this noise and came down to check it out. I suppose it's too much to hope that this might be a surprise party. <clears throat> no, uh, not uh, quite. Uh, Adam caught the offender. Yeah, I know. That's why I'm wondering what I'm doing here. Oh, I don't think you're going to like it very much. I already don't like it. I'm missing the end of a very good movie. So where's the offender? Uh, no. Three. Hi, Dad. Do I accompany you to the station or what? Thought you could use that? Thanks. Do you know she was back? I thought she was at uni. I thought. I spoke to her on the phone a week ago. She seemed fine. She said she was coming up for this medal thing. All right, take off your jacket. Thanks, Susan. You don't have to do this, Maggie. Jacket. There are better things. Wonderful things to be experienced. Such a lot to experience. So much we ignore every day. It's a tree of life. New beginnings. She must have seen where I hid the combination when she worked here. But look, I'm not taking this personally, and you shouldn't either. Thanks. I can't believe you'd do this. What's wrong with you? I mean, there must be something wrong with Your you. Your concern for me is just a pretense. It's how you think you should feel. There's nothing wrong with me. I just did what I had to do. What? what rob the hotel? Rob Chris? The money here could be put to much better use. Susan, if you wanted the money, why didn't you just ask? I feel sorry for you. <laughs> really? I feel sorry for all of you. Are you on something? No, I'm not on anything. Then what the hell is the matter with... Take it out of the station and charge it before I do something I'll regret. You remember the Talbot kid? Yeah. His folks reckon he's got a tattoo of a tree on his arm. Gee, that must be nice for Susan's got one too. How long have you been back in Mount Thomas, Susan? You never left. Where have you been staying? With friends. Yeah, well, friends of these. Why didn't you contact your dad? I did. A week ago. I told him I was doing well and that I was happy, neither of which is a lie. No, you lied, but you were. No. I just let him believe what he wanted to believe. Why? You won't try to understand, so I don't see why I should try and explain it to you. Oh, come on, Susan, this is serious. Depends entirely on what rules you live by, doesn't it? Well, last time I looked, you lived by the same rules. So, what's this about, Susan? It's about getting my life together. With a handful of cash from Chris's safe. Susan, tell us about your tattoo. What do you want to know? Do your friends all have one? Yeah. What does it mean? Will it change your life, Nick? I don't know, Susan, will it? Is that all? Do you know Michael Talbot? <laughs> Look. I broke into the hotel and you caught me. What more do you want? Some answers would be nice. So did you find out anything about this commune she keeps talking about? Well, she's not uh, giving us any names. In fact, she's not telling us anything at all. So what do you want to do? Bail her. Maybe a night in the cells would knock some sense into her. You said she shouldn't be shown any special treatment that works both ways. If it was anyone else's daughter, you wouldn't question Bale. Yeah, maybe not. So you'll go surety? Maybe I can knock some sense into her when I get her home. Can I get out of here now? No, there's still some paperwork to do. You'll be coming home with me, Susie. That no, way... I'm not. Well, Bale's being organised. Never... I'm not going anywhere with you. Well, you'd, you'd rather spend the night in the cells. My friends will come and get me. Oh, you're right. What are they going to use for money? Susie, this is ridiculous. Come home with me. Can I and call can... him now, please? 
Let it boss, then we'll come up with the bio. Now, if that's everything. Same space, sir. Hello, Miss Bush, Senior. So what? Uh, you must be Sergeant Croydon. I've heard a lot about you. Gene Daniels. I trust it's all in order. Nothing. I told you I didn't have a record. We just have to make sure, Mr. Daniels. Yes, I understand. Susan. Thank you, officers. Yeah, <laughs> you got something? No, mate. Hello, Lee. What's your name? Dion. Eh? It's not a bad place you got here, Dion. Been out here long? Uh, off you go, there. You've got work to attend to. If you have any questions, Constable, I'll be happy to answer them all for you. Oh, no, I think I'll be right, thanks, sir. They don't seem worried about us being here. Wait, grab him! Come here! Hey, come hey, here. Let hey, him go! Hey, hey. Let him go! Hey, hey. Hey, caught him trying to stick something in a compost. Hey, why don't you just leave us alone? What did you do with the rest of the stuff, Michael? You know, we caught you with a watch, so there's no use denying it. Tough. Michael, you asked your parents for money. What you need it for? I know what you're trying to do, and it won't work. Look, Michael, I've got a string of burglaries I'm trying to solve here. They told you I was crazy, didn't they? Maybe I am. Yeah. Did Gene tell you to steal that stuff? You're not the only one to get caught. <laughs> Who gave you the idea to rip your parents off? It won't work. There's no question he did over his folks' place. I just don't think he's responsible for all those uh, burglaries. So? If you think there's a whole team operating, maybe we should question some more of these kids out of this commune place. Yeah, I just don't expect to get any more out of them, boss, or Talbot, or Susan, that's all. No, I don't think we will, either. We won't. What? I think um, it's pretty obvious that this bloke Daniels has got a hold over these kids. I think what we should be finding out is why he's bothering to do it. Well, not only the goodness of his heart, he's too flashy to be a Samaritan. No, it's more about power, I think. Schultz, if you've got a theory about all this, I wish to God you'd just spit it out. Oh, it's just it's an idea. I mean, I... Well, maybe they've got a cult thing happening here. What, like the orange people? Uh, he, he might have a point. It might explain why these kids all have tattoos on their arms. You see, some of these outfits, they, they shave their heads, they have uniforms like your orange people, and some of them brand themselves, they have tattoos. I mean, I'm not saying it is a cult, but if it is, if it is, I mean, I don't think we should all go out there, because right now he's probably saying what bad people we are... And, you know how we're going to persecute them, and if we do go out there, we'll just reinforce it. So what do you suggest we do? I don't know, it's just an idea. Oh, thanks, mate. <laughs> now, would you care to tell me what that was all about? <laughs> what do you want? <laughs> <laughs> what, you're suddenly the expert on cults? No, I'm not. You saw Susan, you saw Talbot. What do you make? What's your theory? Well, that's the point, mate. I don't have one. Well, let's just <laughs> leave it a bit, shall we? No. No, I have to know... You used to be a Hari Karishina. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty funny, aren't they, the old cults? Good for a cackle. <laughs> yeah, Jonestown, Waco, they're side splitters, aren't they? It's really funny when families get ripped up, isn't it? That's funny, isn't it? It's funny when you lose your family to these bars. Did you saw the boss? Do you think that's funny? Him and Susan, do you think that's funny? Now, there's not a lot we can do about that, is there? No, that's all right. <laughs> There's not, we just got to sit in our asses and see. Well, I mean, I could go out there. I get on pretty well with that. Yeah, you could. You could do that. You could um, get onto neutral ground. You know, take it to a father's medal presentation. See if you could talk some sense in that. Susan. When are you letting Michael come back? He'll be bailed the same as you were. Good. Less time he spends away from here, the better off he'll be. Oh, look, Susan, we didn't come out here to argue with you. It's your dad's medal ceremony today. I'm sure he'd really lucky to be there. I've got better things to do. Look, it'd mean a lot to him, you know? What, me being there? I've got better things to do, Adam. 
It's just a way of saying, uh, well done, you managed to stay alive anyway. That's a bit unfair, isn't it? <laughs> Nothing's fair. Look, Susan, I don't know what your problem is, but we think you may be in a bit of trouble out here, so why don't you come along with us, eh? Oh, look, you can't force me, and neither can Dad. So why don't you just get off my back? All right, let's go. Wayne. Come on. Wayne, what Let are you doing? Wayne. Come on, you're coming the to the station. Oh, Wayne, Wayne. Open the door. Let me go, Wayne. Alone. Right, watch your head. Jane. Watch your head. Watch your head. Watch your head. Just let go of me. Please. Just what the hell's going on? Well, I'm sorry. Oh, I didn't have much quit. choice. Get her, will you? No, oh, her mates were into it and Jane was coming. You should not get her. Get her from the desk. Well, you sound like an important and we got it. This is kidnapping. Shut up. You don't know what you're doing. For God's sake. You sit down. Let me go. Okay. You get back to the station, you keep your mouth shut, you shut that door, don't say anything to Hashem. Nick, this isn't right, it goes against every rule in the... Don't go on about rules, oh, please, me. because we don't need any rules now. Wait, this has got nothing to do with me. Well, go then, Maggie, just oh, go. Oh, right, leave you here alone with it, get yourself in more trouble. I am staying right here. I shouldn't have to, this is a father's job. Her father should see this. Whatever, just get her out of here before he gets back. Why am I getting fired? Why can't she? She will give me. I'm on with you. You calm down. Such a waste of time. There's nothing you can do for Susan right now. Why don't you just relax and enjoy your big moments? Talk about laying on her hands. I don't know why Faulkner just doesn't send me the damn medal like anybody else would. <laughs> Any bloody excuse to big note himself. Tom, ready for the ceremony? Uh, yeah, I, uh, I might be a second. You waiting for something? <sighs> I guess not. I'm with you. No, you're not, Susan. I am. I get Go on, you know you're not. How are you well, going to keep this up? Until she listens to me, you're not, Susan. Let you think she will. She's here. I've got to try. You're not, Susan. I've seen this sort of stuff done before. I've seen. This is absolutely ridiculous. It's OK, Maggie. I know what I'm doing. Well, I can be sure, Gibby. Susan, I just want to talk to you about Jean and the others on the farm. No. Why not? Is there something about them that you're ashamed of? I won't let you manipulate me. Why would I do that? Jean, Jean said you would. Do you believe everything Jean says to you? Do you? <laughs> Good on you, sis. Good on you. Did he teach you how to do that? Did Jean teach you that? Jean's a wonderful person. Well, I can see that, Susan. <laughs> I just want to talk to you about him. What's wrong with that, eh? Hey? Oh, don't worry about that. Look, I can see. I can see that you care a lot about Jean. I can see that. And I don't want you to get into trouble here. And if Jean is going to, well, rouse... Oh, I'm not a prisoner out there. Jean's the best thing that ever happened to me. Well, tell me why. Tell me why, Susan, I can help you. I can help you because I know your dad. Your dad doesn't understand any of this, does he? He does not understand you, I know that. And maybe if you answer these questions about Jean, if you answer these questions, then I can help you. I can explain things to him. I might be able to do that. I want to help you, Susan, because I'm on your side. I'm on your side, Susan. This guy Daniels hasn't even got a parking fine to his name. Gentlemen. PJ. PJ. I've been out detecting. I've got a name. Chase this bloke up, will you, mate? Yeah, Jason Williams. All right, cool. Now, uh, any dirt on the rummer swami money bags, matey? Oh, no, nothing at all, matey. He's even got a permit to sell his handicrafts. Oh, well, where's Nick? He's doing something for the boss. You're going to have to mind the shop, OK? So there's nobody here? Huh. Great. Look, maybe you're right. Maybe I... Maybe I have made a mistake. Yeah, maybe. Now, Jean's got you working out there day and night. What for, Susan? Oh, you wouldn't understand. No, I don't understand, Susan. I don't understand. I don't. Because when I go out there, all I see... He's a bunch of half-starved kids running around after some bloke who's... We're making a new world for ourselves. We grow our own food and we make our own clothes and we treat each other with respect. So that's what you want. You want a new world. Yes! Susan Croydon wants a new world. No! You're trying to confuse me. You said you'd answer my question, Susan. You're not. Tell me why. Because it's none of your business. That's why. Jean's teaching us and I don't want to mess that up. What's he teaching you? Where'd you meet this guy? Nick. You tell me about this guy. Where'd you meet him? I want to know about this bloke. I want to know what makes him so special, so special, you turn your back on your family it's and your friends. It's not like that. That's what it looks like to me, Susan. 
You run round after him like you're a bunch of slaves. He loves us. Gene loves us. And you love him back. That's what it's all about. You he love him loves back. us. You Why is that so You stupid little bitch. You stupid little bitch. Your mother loves you. Your father loves you. Tom, congratulations. Well done. Thanks, Dean. Isn't there some sort of secret handshake or something? Medal recipients, fall out. <laughs> Very impressive. Thank you, Nathan. We'll get out of here. Just relax. Just a shot and a few words from the local press. Ted, I've got to get back to the station. Surely your boys can look after the place without burning it down for a day. What am I going to say to the press, Ted? Yeah, maybe I should tell them that usually these things get posted out to you, but you've got yours given to you in a pub. I'm sure you'll find something more appropriate than that to say. Look, actually, it's my fault. I've got a pub to run, and Tom's offered to give me a lift. Well, with all due respect, Mrs. Riley, police PR comes first. Emma. Good day for you, eh, Sergeant? Yes. Your family must be very proud of you. Yeah. Yes, they must be, I suppose. Can you hold that up for me? Yes, here they go. That'll be great. Perhaps you'd like one with it pinned on. Mm. I made some calls about him, Susan. His name's not Gene, it's Martin Jameson. So what? It's a pretty boring name for a messiah, isn't it? Martin. You see, before this, Martin was in Adelaide, and he had a group there too, and he called himself a celestial warrior. That's pretty flash, isn't it? You're lying. He had a beauty in Sydney, didn't he, Maggie, eh? I want to go home. Why? I'm scared. You're scared of the truth, aren't you? I'm one with you. Oh, I am. I... That doesn't work anymore. He really does help me. He really does. It might feel that way, but ask yourself, why does he do it? To help take away our pain. <sighs> Look, you don't even know him. If you went out there and listened to him, maybe you'd understand. Like you did? Yeah. I bet you you met some of his friends first. Yeah, I did. I was feeling confused about going back to uni. And I was talking to them about it. And they suggested that maybe Jean could help me out. So I went back there and I met him. And he helped you like a counsellor? Yeah. yeah. We got on really well. We, we talked for hours and, and he invited me to go back there the next day. So I did. And I met some of the other people that were out there, and they were really nice, and they, they all seemed really happy. Are you happy? Yes. You're not sure, though, are you? You're not sure. You went to all this trouble. You lied to your father. You lied to your father, and you're not sure. They're you're not my sure you're family happy. now, and I know they're not perfect. There's never been a family that was. Right. Now, you live out near the old farm road, don't you, sir? Well, Mr Langbourne, have you seen anything weird out there? Uh, excuse me, sir. I'll be... One second. Uh, we found that Jason Williams guy. All right. What's going on? What? What? Mate, this place is like a bloody mausoleum. Where is Shilson Doyle? We're trying to raise him on the radio. It's personal stuff. Personal stuff. Had a meal with me. We're off to the Williams place. Wayne, would you talk to Mr Langbourne? Mind the station. Thanks. Adam. Now, Mr Langbourne, is it? What can we do for you? Tom! Hear me, Tom. Someone here, uh, I'd like you to meet Tom. Cup over here. I only spent about six weeks there. Yeah, so what was the hook? Oh, Gene reckoned we could become self sufficient, live off the land. He kept telling us how the world was all stuffed up, full of pain and suffering, you know. Hard to argue with. He reckoned we could start over, make things right again. I thought he was a bloody prophet or something. Everything he said made sense. Turn your back on the world, on money, on laws, even your family. But that was cool by me. I didn't get on with the rails anyway. So why'd you leave? Couldn't afford to stay. Takes a lot of dull checks to make up five grand, mate. Five grand? You're kidding me. We're all supposed to pay that. At least. Unbelievable. Now, where are you supposed to get $5,000 from? He didn't tell us that. That's why I legged it out of there. 
Jason, would you be willing to make a statement to that effect, mate? Yeah, I don't see why not. Thanks, mate. Appreciate it. No worries. Five thousand dollars, that's a lot of money. Yeah, multiplied by, uh, how many do we see out there? Yes, hello, Matt Thomas. Well, can you hold on a minute, please? I'd like to speak to whoever's in charge. Well, that'd be me, I suppose. I believe you're holding Susan Croydon here unlawfully. I'd like her released now. My solicitor's already been contacted. Sometimes, Susan, sometimes when we're lost or when we're hurt, we feel pain, we grab at anything... It wasn't up. like that! Gene understood how I was feeling about Dad. How could he understand? How could he understand? Because he's pure of mind and body. The answer's coming. Are the answers coming for you? Are the answers coming for you about university, about the problems with your dad, about a new life, are they? Because that's why you went to Gene, isn't it? To find the answers. That's why you worked like a dog. That's why you went to all those meetings. And you're no better off than when you were before you went. Look, that's my fault. I just need to work harder, that's all. Susan, how much time do you spend on your problems? And how much time do you spend on what Gene wants you to believe, on how he wants you to behave, and what he wants you to think. I don't know what you mean. No, he's not a counsellor, Susan. He's not a counsellor. He can't help you the way you want to be helped. That's not true. It's not true. You wanted a new life, didn't you? Well, good on you, Susan Croydon. You wanted a new life. And the life you've got is a life where you cheat and you steal and you follow the words of an ordinary man like they're the words of a god. I never said I did that. You've got to face one thing. You've got yourself mixed up in a cult. No, it's not. No, it's not. What did Gene tell you about us, eh? What did he say about us, that we were wrong? That we wanted to take you away? We'd interfere with your lessons, that's what he said. He meant your programming, that's what no. he meant. And what did he say about your father? What did he say about Tom Croydon? What did he say? He said your father doesn't understand you. He doesn't love you, he doesn't really love you. He just wants to control you, that's what he no, said. No, he did it! I'm right! That's what he said! Isn't it? You've got... No right I've to do it! I've got every right! I've got every right to say it! Who made you the expert? Then? I've got every right! No, I've no. earned it! I've earned it because I've seen someone scream and yell and chant like you! I've seen someone spit at me like you! I've seen my wife! I've seen my wife! I really don't want to debate this with you, Constable. Fair enough. You people forced her into a car, brought her here against her will. That's against the law. I take it you don't consider yourselves to be above the laws you enforce? No, sir. I'm sure my solicitor will agree with you. You what? It sort of just happened, PJ. Adam, why didn't you tell me this before? I figured Nick made it all the time he could get. Oh, all right. Just, just drive, OK? Fast. That was pretty stupid, really, Susan. I went to all this trouble, and then a year later, Zoe and Jennifer get wiped out in a car accident. You see, I think we were going through what people call a rough patch, and pretty soon it became a very bad patch, and we were not doing too well at sorting it out ourselves. I mean... Zoe didn't help. She was just caught in the middle of it all. And I stopped going home altogether. And, um... Jennifer... Jennifer started finding some answers. Because she met some new friends. And they were answers about purifying yourself, I don't know. You know, the big light bulb would go on in the sky and then Yeah, you'd... but sometimes, you know, you need help. Yes, you do. Sometimes, Susan, you do. But Jennifer wasn't getting any help. She wasn't finding a way back. She was just getting lost. Getting deeper and deeper into this crap. She was just shutting me out and Zoe and all our problems. Now, I... I might have been a bit of a pain in the ass to live with. But I love my family, Susan. And I wasn't going to lose it to some stupid idea. So what'd you do? Oh, I went in there and I got her out. Took her to a counsellor. You see, Susan, I do know. I have seen all this stuff. 
But I do know that no one's going to find an answer for you. You've got to find it yourself. My mum used to help me make all the important decisions. And isn't it hard, eh? Isn't it hard when that person's not there anymore? What do you think? I mean, do you think your mum would have let a total stranger tell her what to do? No. She's too strong for that. I'm not. Oh. I never have been. That's not true, Susan. You're strong and intelligent. Oh, maybe that's how you see me. You see something else, don't you, Susan? What? I don't know. Guilt, I suppose. Guilt? What for? What have you got to be guilty about? Same old thing. Same old story. Car accident. And Mum. Only I killed her. It was my fault. All right, Adam, get onto the bank on a record of transactions over the past 12 months, all right? Hang about, what about a warrant? PJ, yes. you got a bit of a situation here? Yeah. What's he doing here? Sergeant Croydon, I strongly suggest you order these men to release Susan. I am more than willing and capable of taking legal action. Are you threatening me, Mr. Daniels? Boss. I want Susan back. You have no right to hold her. Have we arrested my daughter, senior? Uh, no, boss, but I see. Uh, Sergeant Croydon, no, you listen don't to think... me, sir. Susan is facing serious charges, and if you start playing games, then you'll be facing a magistrate with her. Clear? Boss. What? Patterson needs to tell you something. Well, I can't wait, Patterson. No, no, I don't think you can. All right, get this joker out of here before I charge him with obstructing a police investigation. And I am more than willing and capable of doing that. Boss. Yes. Yes. Mr. Mr. Daniels, here we go. Mum said that she wasn't feeling well, and she asked me to drive. But I said no, because I was too tired. No, she didn't argue with me. She never argued with me. So I just went to sleep in the car, and then the next thing I knew, this car was coming straight for us. And I yelled out to her, but she didn't answer. I killed her. Susie. Your mother died of a stroke. It was nothing to do with you. Even if you'd been driving instead of her, it wouldn't have changed anything. But I should have done what she asked me. It wouldn't have made any difference. We don't know that. Yes, we do. Susie, your mother could have died at any time. It was a medical thing. It was nothing to do with you. It could have happened while she was in bed or cooking the dinner. It happened while she was driving the car. You had no control over that. I loved her. How could you explain Jean to us, Susan? What could you have told her to stop her from worrying? Tell her I was happy. Could you tell her you were doing the right thing? Could you tell her he wasn't using you? Could you tell her that you didn't steal to give him money? No. What could you tell her, Susan? I could tell her I was sorry. And you need Jean to do that, do you? No, you're both doing it. You're trying to confuse me. Nick? You lot drag my daughter down here, kicking and screaming just for a talk. She's coming along. She's, she's doing OK. She was a bit angry when she started, but she's coming along fine. She's going to be OK, I think. Do you know what you're doing? Do you? Yeah. Have you got any idea how much trouble you could all be in? Yeah. Yeah, I know. But it was Susan. I, was, I thought it was worth it. Get Doyle out of there. No, she's in there because of... Look, Schultz, Susan is my daughter. I dare say I can trust you to take care of her. Even if I can't trust you to obey the rest of the rules. Yeah, all right. What, what do you mean your dad didn't love your mum? Well, he coped so well with it, you know. Oh, Susan, he loved her just as much as you did. <sighs> Maybe. He was just as hurt by death, Susan. Yeah, but he just got over it, you know? He just... 
Just put it away. Oh, do you think he could have lived with her all those years and not have been hurt by her death? When someone dies, Susan. When someone dies, you feel so many things. When someone you love dies, you're going to feel pain, you're going to feel hurt, and you should because they're just not there anymore. They're not there. And your dad lives with that pain. You gave your pain away. You gave it to Jean. He took it away. You gave him your mother. You took it away and you blame your father because he lives with his pain? I don't understand that. But I... I just thought that Jean could help Oh, you. Susan, starving yourself to death and working 80 hours a day, that's not going to do anybody any good. Why don't you just... try and do what your dad's done? Why don't you just say to yourself, Mum's gone, she's dead. And I'll live with that pain. I'll face it and I'll live with it. She understood me, you know. I didn't even have to say anything and she didn't know what was on my mind. I couldn't have any secrets from her. Jean, is it? <laughs> She'd think I was crazy, wouldn't she? It seemed like a family. <laughs> Doesn't even come close, Susan. family is. I used to come home sometimes really late after a really shitty day, you know, really bad shift, terrible things had happened. And I'd come into a, to a dark house and I'd go into Zoe's room and I'd just look down at her. And it'd just be a marvel. Sometimes she'd wake up and she'd just smile and hug me. And even though she's dead, I can still feel those hugs sometimes. I bet you any money your dad did that to you. And you hugged him just as hard. Because <laughs> you loved him. on Gene Daniels' financial transactions yet? Yeah, it's coming through from Mossberg now. Uh, Susan, I'll set a chat to you. I'm sorry, Dad. Careful, I give him that. Yeah. Well, according to the real estate agent, he paid for the lease of the farm six months in advance. Oh, there's no record of that in the bank statements. Cash transaction. Get that statement we took from Jason Williams, will you? Yep, yeah, no problem. I think we've got you, Mr. Daniels. Nick, um, why don't you go home and get some rest? I'll, I'll be right, thanks. Listen, all that stuff that you were saying. Just leave it, will you? Yeah. I'll see you tomorrow. 
tomorrow you and I need to have a little talk. In the meantime, thanks. Go ahead, Nick. Time for financial advantage by deception. I'll come with you. Not a soul. Didn't waste any time. I never do. Nick said you couldn't have lived with her for so long and not be devastated by her death. Well, he was right. Well, then how come... How come you seem so strong? You've got to be, don't you? 